Okay, round three against Clang. Apparently I just go first every time because I'm blessed. <clears throat> Going first is definitely better in general in Soulforge. Because uh, you get the first turn in rank two. It's generally pretty hard to catch up if your opponent falls behind in the first turn of rank two. Like if I play two rank two cards in the first turn of rank two, my opponent only has one or zero, he's just basically dead. I've died to it so many times, I've killed so many people with it. It's just how it works. This card's very good, uh, normally some people. It's a 5-5, five, five. if another creature's in the lane with it, it gets regen. And he righted the Grim Gone at it, which is questionable, because it trades. Uh, I'm actually going to make sure it trades by playing a Warbringer on <laughs> Because I don't want him to like contagion search my guy or anything and have a gigantic Nrali symbiote. Uh, as for my second play, hmm, I think it's it's hard to tell between Seismic Adept and Strain Roller. With Seismic Adept, I'm not really protecting anything except for like the Warbringer onto, which I don't even care if it dies. So it's just a three three. So it's probably better to play the Assurian Brawler. And I'm trying to leave as much room as possible for the Razor Tooth Stalker. And Drew have a Seismic Adept, which is good now. If I would have had the uh, opportunity to play Seismic Adept and Asherian Brawler last turn, that would have been good, but I want I really wanted to make sure that Asherian Brawler or the uh Symbiote died. Because there's nothing worse than a large creature with regen. It's especially with Futera. Or when I'm playing some what is happening over here? Ashuri Spirit is a 1-9 that regenerates, and he's giving it Touch of Light, which kills, I believe, when it deals battle damage to a level 1 creature, destroy that creature. It turns it into a Blight Walker, so I'm just going to Magma Hound it to kill it, and then play Seismic Adept, maybe? It seems to have a lot of position-based spells. I think I want the Seismic Adept to play. Especially with this Razor's Tooth Stalker now. That's gonna that's quite a strong combo. Uh, the best thing about Seismic Adept is it protects itself. Like if they put a creature in front of it, you can move it away. If you have nothing else that's good on your board, like I don't right now. Just all my creatures have like three or less toughness. So he's probably gonna put something in front of Seismic Adept and I can just move it away. It really lets you control the flow of the battlefield. Which makes it good. I believe it's in the current draft format. Vengeful Spirit. He's got. He's playing a lot of defensive cards like Oshawa Spirit, Touch of Light, Vengeful Spirit. These are all cards that have an effect when something dies, and it deals. Uh, Vengeful Spirit actually just minus threes, minus threes. The creature it died to. Um. I guess we'll just make sure he doesn't kill my Magma Helm. No real reason. I'm going to play Flamestoke Shaman here for the adjacency and Razor to Stalker over here. And then I get turn rank 2 and I drew level 2 Seismic Adept, which is nice. Let's me keep hitting with this Razor to Stalker I bet. Uh, you can play another Graveborn Glutton or like a Blight Zombie, Blight Walker, I mean, in front of Seismic Adept. But he has played zero aggressive creatures so far, so I'm not too sold on uh, whatever he's got going on over there. It's a it's <laughs> it's kind of a trap to draft too many defensive creatures. What is he poison here? The shaman? Maybe the adept if he's a five power creature he wants to block with. Yeah, I'd probably poison the adept. But then he doesn't block the razor to stalker, so it's kind of a catch twenty two. I don't think poisoning the stalker is good. Because he can't block it. <laughs> Especially putting. Okay. Um, what do I want to do here? I definitely play the Seismic Adept. And then I think I want to play the Grove Matriarch. Give it haste, then move the Dark Shaper's Vaunt in front of the Grove Matriarch. That way I keep my Flamestoke Shaman alive, deal 6 to him, so he has to block it with something 
you know, a little more impactful than just a vanilla 4-6. My race switch locker becomes a 6-5, and Grim Matriarch is the seedling at the end of turn. And I still have Seismic Adept in play. Two of them, actually. And they're probably going to stay in play. If you play something really large, I can Warbringer Aranti and then move whatever creatures are on a Seismic Adept, pump the Seismic Adept, and kill it. Warbringer Aranti's 8 power at rank 3. It's plus 1 to its uh, power. That's how I remember it. And come on, buddy. Let's try to figure out how you're dealing with the Seismic Adept. Which I, I grant is a really hard card to play around, but with two of them out, it's almost impossible to uh, position your creatures, such as this Ossuary Spirit, which is... You can the bad thing about Ossuary Spirit, oh I normally I'd say you can just ignore it. But when he puts a Rite of the Grimgon on it, that's not really an option. Probably gonna have to move it in front of the Reizutu Stalker. Or the Seismic Adept. I haven't decided which. If I pump the Seismic Adept, it goes to twelve power. And I can deal four to the Ossuary Spirit to put it at fifteen. Then four more to the Adept. Yeah, I think that's the play. Oh, well, by the way, if I didn't mention this before, Seismic Adept is not level gated at all. So, like, you can use level 1 Seismic Adept to move level 2 creatures, which is absolutely glorious. I'm going to overkill this a little bit, just by 1. Okay, that's not that much. And then I'll move the Razor Tooth Stalker. So, if my Seismic Adept dies, I get to move in its place. <clears throat> Poisoning this Razor to Stalker is not the play. Should have just poisoned the 6 3. It would have died in the turn out. I got like two hits in with it. It would it would have just died. The Razor to Stalker is not even close to dying. I mean, it would be closer than it was. I think it's taking four damage. So it would be an 11, power, 11 toughness right now, which is, which is hard to kill. But at 10 power, it's going to kill pretty much anything that blocks it anyway. So I don't, I don't really like blocking that or poisoning it. I would have just blocked the Stalker way before it got out of hand, honestly. He played around too much with the 6 3 to give us my level 1 creatures haste. I didn't realize that Razor Tooth Stalker and Seismic Adept were the main threats on my board. Like, the 6 3 is solid and it's very strong, but it's nowhere close to the level of Noxious that the Razor Tooth Stalker and Seismic Adept are. This is going to poison the. Okay, poison the Adept. That's good, that's probably what I'd do. And then kills the stalker with the glutton. Mm, he's really close to dead now, though. Normally, I would. Let's see what I can do here. If I move the Venom Fang, it doesn't really do anything. It makes me push in damage, which I guess actually is good enough since he's at 26. So if I can just move the Venom Fang and attack him with a couple creatures, pretty close to dead. And I'll play a Stormcaller just because it has the largest body. Like, he's at 12, he has to block both my creatures, and I have a creature that gives other creatures haste. It's definitely not his day. <laughs> Life Lifeshippers Vaunt and Dryad's Boon. That's really cute. I can pump the, the Life Shippers Vaunt and whatever creature with the Savant's ability. I don't know how he lives through this next turn. Maybe he plays... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't think it's possible. So let's see what he's got. Maybe he can pull a little rabbit out of his hat. Do us a little magic trick. That's a good start. Maybe he can... Something. <laughs> <clears throat> What's awkward is I have just 5 damage to his face right here. It's 5 damage to our creature player. So I can actually just hate his face for 5. So if he lets... Okay, what is this? He's dead on board if he does this. I guess not completely dead on board because it can shrink one of my creatures, but it's absolutely silly <laughs> to just put himself dead on board. 
Like all I have to do is hit spacebar and he's dead. What, what, what was that? I guess he was dead no matter which way if he blocked with those creatures. Kind of reminds me of actually playing in set 1 and 2 when people had no idea what they were doing ever. Including myself. I had no idea what combat was. Like, I would put things in such in the weirdest possible configuration and not realize I was falling behind. And just like play a bunch of spells instead of creatures. Which is the weakness to set 1 and 2 draft. The spells aren't that great. And then he just concedes. So sweet. That is 2-1. Need to win the last one in order to get my tickets back. <laughs> 